Well, first of all, I would like also to organize, uh, to thank the organizers of this symposium. It's a pleasure for me to be here and a real honor to come to Middlebury College. As you can see, uh, I'm coming from Universidad Autónoma de Madrid. There is a group of scholars who has been working very much on Chilean history. I'm one of them. Most of my research are related more with the solidarity movement with Chile, actually after the military coup, but I think it's interesting to know, uh, especially for this uh, activity, what happened during the 60s. And I think I would like to add also that probably some of the hopes and expectations which arise in the 70s, in 78 in Western Europe and also even in the United States actually ended up in a very violent way in Chile in 1973. So, I think it's interesting to know a little bit more about the context in Chile in order to understand how it was possible the democratic election of Salvador Allende in 1970. I think it's quite unique and singular case in the world. We don't have other similar experience as the one in Chile. That way make it so, so interesting for us to, to understand it and to, to study it. But also because it's not possible to understand what happened uh, with the Chilean left and with the Chilean new left uh, in the late 60s. That's why I would like to say not as 1968, but 1970. I think um, most of the events which happened in 1968, the one we have been listening today and also yesterday, they ended up in a very violent way, and that way they became so popular and so well known. In Chile, there was also 68, but there was also 67 and 69, as in the other countries. But most of these activities actually ended up in a very positive way. So that's why they are not so, so well known, and also because we have the other day, 1970, which actually overlap the Chile in 1968. So I think it's interesting to, uh, to make some sort of analysis and discussion in order to, to see the political evolution of this, this country. As I wrote down here, the sociality of Chile is a combination of political and social multicultural facts, both national and international. And especially after what happened in 70, uh, the whole world was looking at Chile as a probably um, example for the for their own countries. Probably if the events of 68 here in the United States or in, in Western Europe would have developed in a different way, they could have had also 1978 as people had in Chile. Some sort of a new different political alternative. And as it was mentioned also before today, in Chile and also for the European left, there is some sort of nostalgia for what happened in Chile in the 1970s, especially from 1970 to 1973. The question I would like to pose, why in Chile? And this only really happened or could have happened in Chile? Well, we will see this uh, today. This is the, the content of, uh, na, uh, of my presentation. First of all, a, a national context, the political scenario in Chile in the 60s. Uh, which were the traditional or historical left parties, what about the new revolutionary left, what happened in 1967, 68, 69, the university reform, which was very significant and very important in order to understand what happened to the Chilean youth, and then, of course, the international context, and something which make the Chilean case quite unique or uh, in relation to the whole Latin American political process is the cultural dimension. I think nothing has really been said or not so much about the influence of the cultural dimension uh, of the youth and um, uh, political movement, but in Chile was very important in also for the Western life because it, was, it became part of their identity. In Chile, something which uh, we cannot avoid is the role of the Catholic Church. Even today, Catholic Church is very important. They own the biggest or the most uh, uh, prestigious university, Universidad Católica. But actually, uh, Catholics at that time, they started to change in relation to what happened in 68 in Medellin. Maybe you know about the Episcopal Conference, uh, which actually uh, made this new idea of the theology of liberation. Uh, a reality. Mm, then also, in order to understand Chile and uh, make a difference with other Latin American countries, you have to look at the Chilean political map. It's very similar to the Western European countries. A, a traditional, typical communist party, socialist party, Christian Democrats, conservative parties, we make it kind of unique. We don't have similar situation in other Latin American countries. Uh, social and political relative stability. 
Uh, we have also to understand um, the situation after the election of uh, Eduardo Frey in 1964, because he promised a lot of reforms, a lot of changes, so that made possible an agrarian reform, and also uh, it was the period when, for the first time in the history of Chile, indigenous radical organization appeared, especially in 1969. Before that, uh, the indigenous organization, or the indigenous group, they were never active in politics. We can make some sort of similarity with the Black Panther or maybe with the Afro organization here in the United States, but in Chile it was the indigenous population. And therefore, it was a very important transformation for the country in the 60s. Here we can see a picture uh, of 1969, when, well, after the agrarian reform, where the government decided to give back some of the land to the, to, to the Mapuche people. Mapuche is the main indigenous group of southern Chile. It means people's land. Uh, Che means people, Mapu means land. So it was very important for them to get back the land that it was taken from their hands after the conquest. So you can see they were making a party after this uh, agreement with uh, the person here with the glasses is the agriculture miniature, minister of, of Eduardo Frey, who is the man in the picture here. Um, it was interesting that in the 64 election, there were only two candidates, Allende and Frey. Frey represented the Christian Democrats, but he had also the support of the United States. And that was something singular because for the first time, the United States government was actually promoting a, some sort of left center candidate because they realized it was the only possible way to defeat Salvador Allende. And even though the mm, political program he had uh, including many reforms, as I just, as just told you. And the conservative sector were very much uh, disoriented and disorganized. They didn't know how to deal, how to face this uh, political situation. But finally, they reorganized uh, their party in 1968 with a new name, National Party, in order somehow to stop all these reforms that uh, Eduardo Frey was trying to implement. He also nationalized uh, the copper industry, which was very important because at that time, about 60% of the Chilean export were related to copper. <clears throat> and then, uh, coming up next to the 67, there was a real radical political uh, movement. Uh, there were many new organizations. Uh, even the Christian Democrats uh, didn't really know how to uh, deal with the most uh, activist uh, young leaders, so there were two new more parties coming up from their uh, organization. In 1969 was MAPU, the one you can see in the picture. It was a Christian-based organization, but they were taking some of the ideas of Che Guevara, as you can see there. And then also Izquierda Cristiana, which became part of the uh, Unidad Popular Government later in 1970, as well as, as MAPU. And therefore, the ideas of the next uh, candidate, Radomir Otomic, in 1970, was, who was the candidate for the Christian Democrat, was very similar to Allende's. And therefore, that's why people actually voted for Allende, because they didn't show so many differences. Um, what about the historical left parties? Here we can see the two candidates, uh, one from the socialists, Salvador Allende, and one for the communists, uh, Pablo Neruda the famous poet. Uh, in that year, actually, they decided to run for the president just with one candidate, and they chose uh, Allende, but Neruda supported him very much during the whole campaign. Um, they both uh, represented, represented the democratic uh, um, uh, way of facing the politics, they didn't want to go for a real revolution or violent revolution. They had some ties with, with Cuba, but they wanted to respect the, the legacy of Chile. Only the Socialist Party had a secret organization. Not so many people know about them. It was called or, Ejército de Liberación Nacional, but it was mostly created to help Che Guevara in, in Bolivia. And actually, uh, the survivors of uh, Guevara's guerrilla went to Chile once they were defeated because they got the support from the Socialist Party. And they also created a, a guerrilla camp in 69, but they were not very active. And also it's interesting to see that most of the youth organization from these parties actually appeared for the first time also in the late 60s. Um, probably most uh, interesting organization in relation to 68 could be the 
revolutionary left movement, o movimiento de izquierda revolucionaria, as we say in Spanish, was not a political party, but a student organization. Originally was created by Trotsky in 1965, who felt very much disappointed with the election of 1964 because Frey won, won it, as I just told you. And he thought that it was not possible for the left actually to, to get the, the government. Uh, very soon, uh, a new leader, uh, whose name was Miguel Enriquez, from the um, city of Concepcion, he had more radical ideas because the Trotskys actually didn't agree with this uh, violent uh, struggle. And he had traveled to China, to Cuba. He had very good contacts in, in this country. And he actually decided to, to go for, for the revolution using other strategies. The problem was that in 1969, even though they had already robbed some banks, uh, they saw an Allende who was more or less connected to the Mir because his daughter was very active, uh, also had a lot of sympathy with Mir. Um, it could be some sort of contradic contradictions uh, in the st strategy. So therefore, Mir decided not to make any kind of attacks anymore to public uh, institutions in order to help Allende to, to go for the presidency. Most of the members of the MIR were uh, coming from the middle class. We can say it was a bit similar to, 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 to Pamaros in Uruguay or PRT from Argentina, but much less violent. And Chilean right tend to say that they were terrorists and they were committing a lot of terrorist attacks already in the late 60s, but they didn't actually. They just were in some banks. It was very important in 68 because it was the first time when Mir came on action. Uh, they were robbing some bags in the higher class neighborhood in the eastern part of Santiago. Um, they were trying also to create some guerrilla camps, but they failed because they didn't have so much support in the countryside. Later on in 1971, they created a new branch of the organization with the support of the Mapuche. Indians and uh, somehow uh, they grew up very much and then well uh, what happened after 1973 is a different story but we have to also make some connection to what was happening here or also in the western country because many activists from 68 both in Europe and the United States actually went to Chile in 1970 to see personally what was happening and many of them joined this organization. And as you know, Charles Hoffman and Frank Terugi, who disappeared after the coup in Chile in 1973, uh, probably had some connections with Mir. Uh, <clears throat> something which was very interesting for me it was that they criticized very much the Soviet invasion of uh, 1968 in Prague. And therefore, they, that made a big difference with the Communist Party. Uh, the relation between Socialist Party and Mir was fine, uh, they collaborated in some uh, activities and action and strategies, but with the communists, it was uh, not so good. Here's a picture of Miguel Enriquez and the other leader of MIR in, in the city center of Santiago. And here you can see also Miguel Enriquez with a picture of, of Che Guevara. The fact that Che Guevara was killed in 1967 probably would have uh, make a big influence on Chilean politics. If Che Guevara would have survived or, uh, that situation, he would have stayed alive some more years. Maybe we couldn't speculate for different um, political development of, of Chile. But we cannot not understand either what happened without uh, commenting a little bit the university reform. Uh, started at the Catholic University of Santiago and Valparaíso, then expanded to other universities, also to the Universidad de Chile, which is the, the biggest one. And it was interesting because, uh, as it happened here, in most of the other countries, the students occupied the main buildings, but the government was willing to negotiate with them. And actually, most of the result of this negotiation are written here, more flexible education program, more research activities, more participation of students in decision making, and they try to connect the university with society's reality and needs. And also, uh, this was possible due to a great success uh, of students' question regarding their goals and demands. There were not so much internal discussion or debate. Even though they belong to different political organizations, Christian Democrat student and Mir student actually agree to, to look for their demands. 
and <clears throat> then just a couple of slides. The international contest that we cannot avoid, the Cuban Revolution of 1959, the defeat of uh, Che Guevara, 68 in Medellin, the one I mentioned, also the Vietnam War and the Tet Offensive it was very important in Chile. Victor Jara, the main singer of Chile, actually dedicated a song to Ho Chi Minh. Uh, and also something we cannot uh, uh, forget, it was the arrival of a lot of Latin American political refugees, mostly from Brazil, who arrived in Chile after 1964, like uh, Paulo Freire. Paulo Freire wrote his first important book, entitled La Educación como Práctica de la Libertad, in Chile. I had a lot of exchange and uh, discussion and meeting with Chilean scholars, and therefore the value of liberation became very important in Chile together with the uh, uh, university reform of 1967, which in some universities was implemented in 1968. And as I said in the beginning, the uh, cultural dimension was very important because somehow a lot of Chileans who were not so much engaged in politics became to uh, became activists of different organizations because they felt attracted with this uh, production, with this cultural production. A lot of new artists, a lot of musicians, uh, painters, poets, all with the idea of creating a new man, uh, El Hombre Nuevo. And they were trying to go back to their cultural roots and tradition as Violeta Parra. And uh, even Salvador Allende and other political leaders, they realized it was very important to create this new song with the easy slogan so it could be easy to memorize, to animate the, the public to go for the revolutionary struggle. And therefore, in 1968, uh, the first new Chilean song uh, took place uh, in Santiago, and it was organized by the Catholic University. Um, and therefore, uh, as I told you before, this cultural dimension became part of the Ch uh, Chilean but Western left worldwide. This is a, one of the painting we could have seen in San Diego in the late 60s, uh, made by the uh, brigade uh, Ramona Parra. And this is a picture of the Inti Gimani and then other groups like uh, Quilapayum. Uh, they had many political songs. Many of them were translated into other languages, into Portuguese, into English, into French, even into Swedish. And my conclusions are the ones written here. I think the Political reforms made by Eduardo Frey had two big consequences, radicalization and reorganization of the, of the conservative parties. In the beginning, they could actually uh, uh, fight against the left, but then they succeeded in 1973 after the coup. But also, uh, thanks to this reform, the opposition left parties didn't have a very strong, a very radical a position against Eduardo Frey because most of the reform were more or less what they had to do, but not so, uh, so deep. And uh, also thanks to the relative insignificant role of Mir until 1969, a violent revolution was not seen as a threat by the society. All left political parties do not represent the desire and hope of the radical youth, and therefore they had to join Mir and other organizations. And um, Chile's and therefore, Chile's political and social characteristics made possible the electoral victory of Salvador Allende in 1970 with 36% of the vote. It was actually his fourth atheism, but even though due to this uh, situation, I have explained, it was possible to go for the, the first democratic revolution of the world. Thank you.